Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome to the show, Keith Willard joining us here, our owner and event planner at Keith Willard Events. Excited to have this legend here joining us to talk about the work he does. And first and foremost, welcome. How are you today from sunny, beautiful Florida? <laughs> oh, great. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Jill. This is, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is well, awesome. Same here. You are in Florida, right? I don't know. You can yes, be working yeah. elsewhere. Where no, Whereabouts? We're in Fort Lauderdale, so it's beautiful right now. I think it's all of 78 degrees. So we've got our jackets on and our Uggs. No, I'm kidding. Oh, totally. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we sure do in New York. Well, it's great to see you here. Uh, such an accomplished man. Uh, your Thank company you. is amazing. I, I got to personally, you know, check you out and see all these events you do. Let's talk. Uh, KeithWillardEvents.com. Yeah. That's the website. K-E-I-T-H-W-I-L-L-A-R-D events.com. Tell us about your business. So I, it's a social and corporate event uh, planning company. I've been in business for about eight years at this point, and I've basically been doing events my entire life. I was actually started as a director of catering for Ritz Carlton and then decided to make the jump nine years ago into this business. And so now I focus really on weddings, like weddings is kind of my heart and soul of what I do. Amazing. Well, I want to get to know you even further back because I know you've had this passion since you were like six. Tell yep, me a little six. bit about your childhood, <laughs> where you grew up and the type of things you used to do, and which, you know, oh definitely, God. you know, the visionary to see what you were going to be doing in the future. It kind of, yeah. T tell us the stories. Yeah. So I, I actually am originally from Texas. So I was born and raised in Texas, Harlingen, Brownsville, McAllen, like as South Texas as you can go. And I, I remember very specifically when I was six years old, there was, uh, there was, I don't know if anybody even remembers this, but there used to be a thing called the Jerry Lewis telethon. Right? Of course, I remember right? it. Do you remember it? Oh, thank God. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not too old at this point, nope. but they used to give the kids like these little milk cartons that you would put a penny in when pennies actually used to be worth yes. something. <laughs> and so I, uh, I, and as a way of getting more people to put pennies into this little container, I would actually dress up my yard in different motifs every year. Wow. And it just so happened to be fall, like right after the, the, the high school, like big, you know, uh, dance party. And so they would decorate and put stuff everywhere, all over the highways and stuff. And of course, here I am, you know, six years old, dragging these things back to my yard. Thank God for my mom. God bless her. Oh. And and would dress things up every year as a means of getting the neighborhood to come by and, and do put little pennies in. And, it, and every year I used to raise hundreds of dollars, which again, used to be. Wow. Lots of <laughs> lots of pennies for a little mm -hmm. six year old, and then as I grew up, I I just loved everything about events. I loved how the the joy that would come out. I loved the fact that it was an emotional marker for people because it was always meant as a, a means of celebration. I mean, what do they say that we only get together for weddings, births, and deaths? Right? I mean, and that is really really true. And in many ways, all three things could be considered positive. Hopefully, mm -hmm. in this day and age. Um, and so it's just nice to be a, a part of people's personal lives in, in this kind of way, in such a positive moment. I mean, that just makes it simple. And then after we moved to, to Texas, I went to um, college at the University of Texas in okay. Arlington. And then um, when I was about 32, I decided to go through a, not a midlife crisis, I call it a, an awakening. I decided that I didn't really love what I was doing with my life and what I was where I was at. And so I decided to move to Florida which was 21 years ago, God wow. bless, uh, and decided to basically restart my life. And of course, events have always been at the heart of my soul. And, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't get away from it. Couldn't get away from it. So, and then of course, when I got here, I decided that I was going to do the hotel side of it. I had already done the event production side for many years. Yeah. Had traveled all over the world, did a, a dinner for a thousand people at Madame Tussauds in London and went, you know, traveled to South America and China. And I mean, all of these amazing places. And as lovely as that may sound, mm -hmm. it's not that great. Travel is not yeah. that great, right? It's a lot. It's a hard work. Um, so when I got to Florida, I decided that I was going to try to do the more corporate route. You know, I thought health insurance was important. A 401k was important. Yeah. At that time. 
and started as an entry level catering manager at a hotel called Pier 66, which is kind of an iconic hotel I, down here. I stayed Florida. there before. And then <laughs> it was some hurricane like 2005 or something. We got the letter under our door. We had to leave. That yes. was years ago. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't I started... remember which one that was, but it was a beautiful hotel. <laughs> right. And it had, I used to have a circular um, dinner area at the top that used mm-hmm. to spin that everybody loved. And it's still in existence, by the way. It went through a massive remodel. It's supposed to be opening up here in about three or four months. But, oh, so it's closed right now? Yeah, it's closed. It's closed right now. Because I looked yeah. at it before when I Googled you and I saw it. And you're right. The renderings all look different. The, the, oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. I'm like, it doesn't look like the Pier 66 I stayed at, but it is. No, okay. It's going to be incredible. It's all modernized glass. It's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous hotel. I'm really excited about it. I mean, that whole area is going through a big renovation, but off topic. Um, but yeah, so I started off as a catering manager and really fell in love with weddings, which was kind of my department. And then slowly worked my way up to senior catering manager and then left that hotel and became a director of catering for a hotel called The One and then Mm -hmm. then moved on to Ritz Carlton as their director of catering. And it wasn't until then that I decided that, you know, it was time to go back into business for for myself. I really, my couples kept wanting me to, they'd love me, but maybe that hotel, that specific hotel wasn't exactly right for them. And they're like, Mm -hmm. can you come with us can and i'm like you know sorry that's not not possible well after getting asked a, a few dozen times i decided maybe it's time to go back into business for myself and so that's when keith willard events was born amazing well congratulations so I mean, that's we're a here. short version that's, i know i'm sure there's much more to that and by the way keith willard uh can we find you on social media as well tell us the handles for you yeah absolutely instagram it's all my name so instagram it's keith willard facebook it's keith willard linkedin it's weird it's keith willard one which i always thought was kind of strange i must have missed it barely um and then also on instagram it's keith willard events is kind of the newer page the there was actually another keith willard event planner in Florida, in Orlando, and he just retired a couple months ago. And so he gave up the handle and I was like finally able to get it. So yep. yeah, so awesome. that page is just big building. All right, great. Well, let's get started. Keith Willard yeah. Expert Wedding Planning. Uh, let's talk about that because you said weddings are huge. Obviously, are we yeah. doing weddings in just Florida or all over? What makes over. your events unique? I mean, I've seen. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Thank you. That's sweet. Um, I like, you know, the thing is that I, I think what happens many times with couples is that they get too focused on Instagram or Pinterest or one of those like brilliant photos that mm-hmm. you see that's perfectly lit and everything looks amazing, but that's not life. That's not reality. I mean, that is one photo that probably took days or not even in weeks to get so that they could publish that one particular photo. Weddings are about people. You got to make sure that you're there to enjoy that moment. It's your once, you know, you get once in a lifetime, so to speak. Um, But, you know, it's you get that one opportunity to really enjoy yourself, enjoy your guests and create an environment that they are going to be able to spread the love and joy that they feel for you. And which is why they came to the wedding. And so sometimes that's not always about like the most amazing over the top expensive linen or the, you know, $10,000 centerpiece. It's it's more about like what kind of environment can you build to make sure that everybody feels good about being there and that they have a, a comfortable um, ability to yeah. be able to connect to other people that they may not know, right? And so that's where I really start when it comes to planning. I want to know about the couple. I want to know what makes them them, Got it. And, mm-hmm. right? And I want the guests to be able to come to the wedding and go, that's so them. I mean, that's the best thing in the world to come to a wedding and know that your mark as a couple is yep, in there. Was and that's, right? Perfectly, and that, yep. And somehow that you've invited these guests into your life a little bit. And, and help with the celebration. So that's where I really start is that. Yeah. See, my wedding, I've never been married, would be, I just love country music. So people would have ah, to deal with it. Right. And like, no, no 70s, no 50s, no disco. It's just going to maybe some 80s, but country music. But I, I like that. Ooh. And then I'm like, no fish. I hate fish. I hate the smell of fish. I don't want fish at my wedding. So guess what? You're not <laughs> eating fish. But I, and they'd be like, oh, this is definitely chill. <laughs> I love that. And you know yeah. what? And having a clear sense of direction is Perfect. That's a, That's like literally the first thing. I mean, how many couples have I spoken to? And I'm like, so tell me about your wedding. Tell me about your vision. Most people have been dreaming about it since they were six or eight years mm-hmm. old. But there are a, a, a fair amount of people out there that have not really even thought about getting married. And so they have that that blinders on those like that deer in headlights kind of moment. Like, oh, crap. I, I, I don't know. What do I like? 
And so then we go back to the basic. It's like, all right, well, pick your favorite color. And then if we look at photos, I'm like, I'll, I'll send them like six or eight different styles of photography. And I'm like, pick the, your top two. And then they slowly start to give me a direction of what they like, what they're into, how they want to be captured, who they want to work with. And from there, we build it out. And now, you know, we're but, talking every step of the way, right? Yeah, Full service. Every, ste Explain, every step of the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the idea is that if if somebody says, like, they pop the question, they said, yes, I'm I'm ready to marry you. You know, if they call me next, then I help them through all of the different processes. It's like, you know, what kind of venue do you want to be at? Do you want a beach wedding? Do you want a, a hotel wedding? Do you want a, a unique venue kind of location? What kind of food do you want to serve? What kind of alcohol do you want to mm -hmm. include? What kind of decor? What kind of band? What kind of photographer? I mean, there are a million little questions that go along that build this environment. And it can be really overwhelming for somebody that first gets into it. Like, that moment of, oh, crap, there are a lot of questions that I need to answer. And do I even know who, what kind of people I should be hiring? Well, that's that's my job, is to make sure that I protect them as much as possible. You know, a good wedding planner is the advocate for the couple. We don't work for the hotel. We don't work for any type of other company. Our investment, our total interest is ensuring that the couple has their perfect day. And that's our only, only want or need. And or you relieve all of that stress and yep. headache of planning. And you're here to provide choices too. Some people don't know yeah. where, you know, you're going to come to them with venue choices, with invitation choices, and you're helping with the whole package, right? Photography, yep. bands, DJs. I mean, yep. even if, uh, you know, you got to get to, you know, the, 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 uh, what do you want to call it? Busing guests to and from the place. Right. And transportation. Yeah, of course. Wow. Wow. But, you know, There's a big piece of this is budget. You know, there's mm -hmm. a, a million ways to overspend at a wedding. So, you yeah. know, the number one thing, if if anybody listens to anything that I say today, I, my don't do favors. Favors are a waste of time. They're, They're waste, the they, biggest waste of I junk. Hate I hate favors. I can't, even my son, I have a seven and, and, and a nine year old that just had birthdays in school. And yeah. like all their friends bring home, I'm like, you got a junk bag? I'm like, yes. I'm not sending you in with junk bag because that junk bag with like a little thing of bubbles or a stupid <laughs> eraser is going to pencil is going to end up in oh, it's so the garbage, but or it's going to end up in a pile on my floor. But you're right. So, my cousin just so had bad. a wedding last year with the most ugliest little candle favor. <laughs> burn it how to throw it in the garbage and it's such a tedious thing and extra expense and i'm with yeah. you on that yes yes yeah. yes you know and there's so there's lots of ways to save money in those ways and 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 again nobody wants a champagne glass with somebody else's name emblazoned on it they just don't <laughs> so they really true. right i mean how many of those wasteful little gifts have we gotten in there we stick it in the cabinet because we're like oh my god what if they come over for dinner i want to make yeah. sure that we have the favorite mm. After a couple of years, it disappears. It goes back into the garbage. So I like my, my new thing for favors. Look, my girlfriend did it at her her daughter's uh, birthday party recently. Yeah. She gave everyone a lotto ticket, scratch off lotto. That's cool. I like that All idea. Right, I'm into That's that. That's cool. I'm, I'm into it because at least then there's a chance, right? There, yes. As many yes. cool as that could be, the, there's yep. a chance. But mm -hmm. what happens if you do win like the best prize? Like, the, let's say you got a two dollar scratch off and the million, and you have a million dollar prize, and you win. Do you split it with a couple? Oh, like, gosh. No, I don't think so. Yeah, but, okay. okay. So there's some issues there, too. Maybe up their gift, but all right. <laughs> right. But use that money towards something else. Use it towards yes. an experience. Like there's a, a, a company out there that does nitrogen alcoholic ice cream. Think about like a mm -hmm. Johnny Walker chocolate ice cream that is what? actually alcoholic. Like a scoop is actually like taking a shot of alcohol. Oh, my that's gosh. That's cool. That, that's fun. It's interesting. You got the nitrogen going off anywhere. Same price point as a favor would have cost you. That do the cool. experience that is right? unique yeah don't do don't do the favor please don't do that and then even like with entertainment options there's so many different types of bands and djs and options out there for couples that are have a wide range of price point you know not everything means not every like high-end price point means quality it just doesn't you know there are some photographers out there that are just coming out on the market that are 2500 1500 which is here in South Florida, very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And yet there's some other very well-established photographers that are 10, 15, 20,000. Yeah. Does that mean that the two aren't going to be able to capture your wedding beautifully? No, but you mm -hmm. got to know the right people to talk to. And that's where I come in. The expert, Keith Willard extraordinaire. Remind <laughs> oh, us how sweet. we can contact you because we only have 10, my gosh, 10 minutes left. Remind oh, us of all the ways we can find you. And we're just on weddings, but there's still so much more to you. Keith Willard, what's the website? 
It's uh, www.keithwillardevents.com. If it's Instagram backslash Keith Willard or Keith Willard Events, LinkedIn, it's Keith Willard One. Um, and Facebook, it's Keith Willard or Keith Willard Events. Very Perfect. easy. Try to keep it the same across the board. All right. Anything else you want to add about your wedding planning services before we go to the next? Because there's yeah, you a know, lot I more think- that you do. I think what I wanted to put out there is that, you know, it's it's a stressful time. I mean, weddings can create major hit, headaches and arguments between couples. I mean, the number one thing that you got to discuss before you even talk to a wedding planner, before you even talk to anything is like, what is your budget? What are you going to be willing to spend on this wedding? And don't please, for God's sakes, do not tell your wedding planner. It's like, well, we're trying to save money because we're trying to buy a house. I don't need to hear that. I just need to know what your price point is. When you say something like that to any type of vendor, it says, we don't appreciate or regard your services enough to not also then plan a house. It's and a vendor's never going to tell you that that got under their skin, but it did. And the mm-hmm. best thing that you can do is stay positive, stay happy, say, okay, you know what? If we have 30,000 or 60,000 to spend on this wedding, state that 60,000, but don't be afraid to talk about your budget, especially with each other, especially yeah. with each other. All right. Good to know. Good pointers. Now, yeah, not sorry. just weddings you do. Yeah. Uh, hello. What are all these gatherings and other events? There's a lot. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, if it has to do with people, then I'm involved. I'm able to plan. I mean, I've done everything from conferences to um, getaways to bachelorette parties. Actually, there's an article that just came out where I, I gave my advice on on bachelorette parties. I mean, there there are a million different options out there. And so no matter what the event is, there's the same kind of core values are there, which means that you're trying to get something across to your guests in the best positive way that makes them remember it. For weddings, it's talking about your love and your joy and your commitment to each other. For companies, it's either about a sales um, event, about a product, about your sales people trying to get them motivated. Um, if it's a pharmaceutical, it's about a particular drug. Um, I mean, so there are all different, but it's basically the same. How are you going to get this across yeah. to the people there in the most positive way that makes them remember it? Not that they came in and, and had another fish dinner. Ha, ah, sorry, fish. I um, love it. But, you know, but <laughs> it, it's the same kind of way. You want to do something that's different from what yep. everybody else has done because we've all been to a million of those things. It's so true. So you got to make it stand out. and Got to make it stand out. Yeah. So, you know, um, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. So originally my, one of my original clients was Nokia. If anybody remembers Nokia, the cell phone company. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I used to do an event with them and I started something called, um, what, 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 what was it? Oh my God. Nokia blue. It was uh, the Nokia nightclub. So we did okay. this Nokia blue nightclub where every city we created a brand new nightclub because our target audience were 18 to 25 year olds that were manning the phones at their call center. So how do you get those guys excited about selling a phone? So we invited them to a club. So that was our first year. We went to 18 cities across the country, created a new club in every single city. The second year when it was the next product, I actually called every city and talked to the top three hotels, talked to the concierge and said, tell me who your hippest, hottest club is and compiled the list. And then we would actually rent out the club. And then have guests, the, these 18 to 25 year olds come to the, this hippest, hottest club that everybody wanted to go to for the presentation. So they're going to remember. They're going to remember Nokia. They're going to remember the club. They're going to combine the two. And, and you have that cross connection. They, they think Nokia, hip club. Amazing. But that's every single product out there. God, I ramble. Sorry. (laughs) No, you're awesome. You're not rambling. You're just full of so much knowledge. It's bursting out because I really am. And you clearly are passionate about the work you're doing. I love Um, what I do. I can just, I want to hear about any events you're working on or one that just maybe you had. I love hearing these stories. Okay. So, well, and this is actually a little bit of both. So recently we had a wedding at the, uh, I, I say we, like we're all we, like there's multiples of me. Like we're all, yes. Right? Do we all do that? Anyways, Always. I talk it, like that. Too. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> anyway, so we, I had this wedding at the Seaquarium. If you know, if you've been listening to the news, you probably have heard Seaquarium in the news about the fact that the city's trying to close them down because they're just not doing a great job with their animals. And honestly, they should be shut down. Well, they don't deal with their people very well either because we, I had contracted this place a year in advance. So eight weeks before the wedding, still hadn't heard from them, trying to connect with them. 
they reached out and they said, I'm sorry, we've fired our management company that was handling that particular property. And oh. so now you have no contract and your wedding date is now open to the public for anybody to what? grab. Two months, oh. right? Wow. So we had to renegotiate the contract. They raised the price $4,000. They didn't include any of the things that they originally think. We finally got it done. But the problem is that they knew that we didn't have enough time to sue them. And they knew that we didn't have enough time to find a, another venue because there was a big festival happening here in Miami. But that's where a good wedding planner comes into play because I took care of all of those conversations between me and the client so that way they didn't have to stress about it. I did all the emailings, the arguing back and forth, figured out how to make it the best of a very bad situation, got on site, had all sorts of major issues, but the client knew none of this. All they saw was this really fabulous on the water event where they got to have their first dance right as the sun was setting. I mean, it couldn't have been more picturesque it was I, I it's hard to describe in in words when you can't see the video but oh. look for it it's on my instagram <laughs> perfect we will check it out i love it oh my goodness what yeah. else do we have here keith willard by the way here mm. on the line if you are just tuning in we're talking about his amazing events that he does wedding plan planning uh events and all different now social media too is huge right yeah, clearly everyone's is. on social and um i know you're doing a lot with social gatherings in a sense so what type of social gatherings uh you know did you want to discuss here well so Great shows, big, conferences right? right meetings there's a lot well you know a, a big part of my life is is non-for-profits so i try to give money back and and do things for not-for-profits because I come from a not-for-profit background. Part of one of my many jobs when I was in my 20s was the, the executive director of a not-for-profit. And so I think it's really important to give back to the community as much as possible. So I'm always looking for sponsors and donating my time. And and one of the, the big events that's coming up is a, there's an organization here called NACE, National Association of Catering and Events. And it's basically a networking group for all event planners and event staff, right? Event pros. And part of NACE and what I love about it is that it has an educational forum. It's meant to uplift the community as a whole so that we're all better mm -hmm. for having a knowledge base. Yeah. And so the I do an event every year called Taste of NACE, which basically means that we get 12 different caterers, 12 different designers, 12 different florists. Um, for this particular one, we've got three big bands that are coming all of it sponsored, all of it donated, all of the money goes back to a fund to be able to send people that can't afford it to the national conference, right? Mm -hmm. So usually these are younger adults in their early 20s that are just out of college that haven't really gotten their footing yet, but could really use the, the networking and the education that they're going to get from these conferences. So that's yeah. where building these things goes back to the community. And yeah. then also I do a bunch of stuff for breast cancer, the American Heart Association. Wow. I mean, name a not-for-profit. I've probably here in South Florida, feeding South Florida, uh, I've donated it or sponsored it or planned an event for them. It's important. Wow. Oh it's important. My gosh. I of course it is. <laughs> but these are such exciting things to be a part of. And you you're truly shining about this. And that's I clearly what makes you unique. Uh you I enjoy the event and the planning as much as the people who's having these parties and these conferences, oh, yeah. right? Probably more. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is that you gotta be excited about what you do in life and especially this, because again, go back to the stress of putting together an event. I always want to try to put the joy back into the planning process. I mean, how many times, how many times have, has a bride been given multiple quotes or a, let's say contract, right? Yes. You get a contract. True. What mm -hmm. do we mostly do, especially on our phones? We scroll to the bottom and we hit the check mark that says, I agree. Part, a big part of what I do is educating my couples about what they need to look out for. The red flags, the terminology in some of their contracts. Same thing for uh, for some of my corporate clients because they also don't always read the contract. So, so sometimes they get into pretty difficult situations because they didn't do their due diligence first, didn't ask a professional first. Yep. And so many times I'll, I'll go back and clean up things. But again... Being where I am, and this is probably true for any wedding planner that's worth their salt tell anywhere tell in the us. country, mm -hmm. right, is to be able to go back and fix any issues that may have come up before you book them. They need to have a wide resource of people like NACE in order to, like, if something happens that they have somebody else that they can easily go to and fix. 
you know, putting out fires is a big part of my day when I do it. I'm sure it does, but uh, you execute them exceptionally flawlessly well you in say. psychology you know uh, and many, by the way you got a lot of a lot of awards you've won as well oh, and been shoot, recognized yeah. it's always good to talk about your accolades Is it? I mean, <laughs> yes okay. And yes, I mean, I mean, I'm starting to sweat. Sorry. Well, stop. No, I saw it. Like you've been featured in uh, Brides Magazine, uh, The Knot, The Best of Weddings Hall of Fame, uh, uh, The Knot, Best of Weddings, uh, Couples Choice Awards, Wedding Wire. Hello. Also, U.S. News and World Report. Yeah. Impressive. And, and New York Times and Forbes. And I mean, just, yeah, I've been I've been doing this for a really long time. And I always feel a little uncomfortable talking about that because Many times I don't even I I don't even know I've won it and then I'll get sent it and of course you have to publicize it I mean it's unfortunately part of the part of the job but it does yeah. make me very uncomfortable. <laughs> no, but you shouldn't. It just proves it. I mean amazing and the testimonials of all the work you've done and check out the 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 amazing uh, galleries as well um, yeah. and get to know more of them. If you do want to get in touch, Keith, how does it work? How can we contact you and reach out for an initial consult? Super, is super easy. And by the way, the first call is never about a sales job. I actually want to hear what you've done, what awesome. decisions you've made. And I want to be able to help like guide you in the right direction, mm-hmm. regardless if you hire me or not. My job is to do as much as I can to help people. And that's first and foremost. And then if you find value in what we talk about on that first call, great, then bring me on the team. But if not, no big deal. I just wanted everybody to leave that first conversation with something that's positive and helps. And so in order to get in touch with me, again, email me. You can reach me at, at through my website, actually, www.keithwillardevents.com. There's uh, a contact page on the last page. Um, or direct message me on Instagram at backslash Keith Willard or backslash Keith Willard events. Same for LinkedIn, Keith Willard one. Same for Facebook, Keith Willard or Keith Willard events. Uh, I answer every single call. I actually pick up my phone. I love it. Thank you so much. Pleasure getting to know you today. Are we going to be speaking again? I Are we? I am assuming. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> okay, some people sign up for more shows. I was going to say next time, I would love to see, like, maybe we could share some of your um, event galleries that I've seen online. Like, it would be great That's to pull sweet. up some pictures of your events and uh, see some of this lavish stuff that you do, because I- I'm looking at it now, and I want our listeners to see it, too. You got to go to the website, of course, or check out the social media, but hopefully we'll be back to talk as well and get in touch with him. Thank you so much, Keith. Thank you, Jill. It was awesome. Oh. Same Sorry here. <laughs> uh, you did not ramble. I'm a rambler like myself. Rambled. We're excited to have you. Stop. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. We'll talk soon. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's It's going to be okay.